All right, I'm gonna try to quickly show you what I did to create these sort of like Kino style or Keanu style visual effect with the carousel tool that I've been working on. Now, this is actually just a clip that I dropped in and then I opened the clip in Fusion, added a tracker and then matched that. I added the generator right here and then I animated the generator to match the movement of the finger. Now the tracker, what it does is that it tracks the element to the camera so that it moves a little bit, right? So it's a little bit more realistic, I guess. And then I added this glow effect just as an extra touch. Now as a carousel tool, as you already know, if you download the free version, it's pretty much the same right here. It has the loaders and the time stretcher and the transform so you can actually adjust individual things. And that's pretty much it. Now I still haven't done the part where I add the option to change this to video, but I will try to do that later today maybe. For now, it's just images, right? So the way that this works is like these. First of all, I'm gonna copy these and then just reset everything. Uh, remove all video effects. I think that should um, get rid of the fusion composition as well. Let's see. It didn't, well, too bad. Let me just delete everything. All right. Okay, this is the video, like uh, the raw version of the video, I guess and it already copied the color stuff that I did to it, which was basically just a vignette and then just a little bit of contrast curve like these to make things a little bit more interesting. So as you can see here, we have the animated element. And at first I tried to do this as an overlay type of thing by adding generator right from here. But I couldn't quite match it the way that I wanted to by opening this infusion and then adding a media in right here, setting this to background and then having the tracker do its thing. I'm not sure why the tool is opening down there. Anyway, yeah, so I tried to add in the tracker right here. That way we have this generator right here in, in the edit page. I will still test that out and then I'll let you know if that works the way that I want it to work later on. So first of all, oops, we have this clip, which is in 4K. And if I open that in Fusion, it makes it a little bit slower for the tracking and stuff. So in this time, I'm gonna try setting this up as a Fusion clip just to test this out. Now I'm gonna open that in Fusion. And the first step is to add a tracker. Now, if you have the studio version, this IntelliTrack would show up by default and you can use that if you like or use the normal tracker if you want. Uh, a lot of times I just still use the point tracker because it seems to do the job a little bit better. Um, so that's what we're gonna do just for now. After you track these, you have to wait a little bit. Now, while we wait for the tracker to do its job, let me just tell you about the Suave Bundle real quick. You can find it at bundle.suave.com. Now, the Suave Bundle is a collection of over a thousand tools and elements that I've created over the past five years for DaVinci Resolve. Now, the price right now has gone up to 30 bucks, so if you haven't gotten it yet, too bad. But if you're part of the email list, I did send a coupon code a couple of days ago that gives you 10 bucks off, so make sure to check that out if you haven't gotten the pack yet. All right, let's continue with the video. Now, if this was an actual, if this was the actual 4K clip again, this would have taken probably a little bit longer, right? So feel free to change or to do the fusion step as well. Now, the last step as you saw, well, before I do the last step, I'm gonna show you the process. All right, so we have the point right here and then we're gonna go to operations then change the operation to match move and make sure that this is set to foreground over background. All right, now we're gonna press control space R and if you haven't seen the latest tip of 2024, make sure to watch that because that's what I'm putting into practice right now, which is to be able to see all the generators in Fusion right here. And for that, you have to open the edit tab right here first. Now press control shift and space bar. And now you should be able to find all your generators inside Fusion as well. This is set up as a group. So if we just connect these, we can see everything right here. Okay, now, first of all, I'm gonna get rid of this tab right here and selecting the group as a whole so that we can see all the options right here. 
we're going to go to the 3D tab and we're going to use the translation to adjust the position over clip. So right now it's a little bit in a weird place. So just by using the translation Y, also the Z, if you want to make this a little bit smaller or a little bit further away. And if we press play, we can see it's following or tracking the place. Now, this new function that I added also is the freeze card facing direction, which is an option that took me a super long expression to build, but it works. Basically, if you press these, all the cards are just going to look outwards and they automatically adjust depending on the amount of cards that you have, right? Now here you can adjust the card size if you make if you want to make them bigger or smaller and here you have the overall scale of them as well. So if you make these really small like that, you can make your cards a little bit bigger so that the space is filled up like that. And always you can adjust the rotation angle a little bit if you want the cards to show up in the background or make these like that maybe. It all depends on the perspective of your element that you're tracking on most likely. And this is the spin one that we use for the actual spinning effect. For the initial card animation, what I did on the first one was, I think I animated the scale, if I remember correctly. But then you can also adjust the blending mode. What I did for the outro was I actually, when the card was selected, I just animated the blend mode on these so the cards uh, don't show up anymore, right? So they just fade out basically. Okay, and then the next step would be to find where the movement happens right here. We can see it starts right here at 15, let's say. So then we can just go and create a keyframe on the spin. Make sure to match the movement right here. Like that. And we're gonna move these to the right. Well, actually, clockwise so if we press play we can see that it move now you can go to the spline tool and selecting everything right here select all tools fit to screen then we can see the spinning keyframe press f and if you ease this in like that and decrease the ease out a little bit then it sort of tends to match a little bit better like that all right, and then after that, you just basically repeat the same process for all the other spins. And at the end, I added this little like tapping, right? Which was, let's see, this tapping. So when this tapping happened, what I did was I actually went back to these um, card, where is it? Yeah, I think I used it, these card transform to animate the scale a little bit because this one, for the actual cards or the ones that are named cards have an expression to them. So here, let's say you find the one that you selected. I think it's this one. No, not that one. Let's see, which one is it? I can't remember which one I did. Oh, I remember. Since I made all the others disappear, what I ended up doing was I animated all the card size right here. But so we're gonna animate the size when the tapping happens just like that but then i animated the blend mode for the different cards to disappear like these so following the let's see the keyframe right here when the tapping happens create a keyframe for the blending mode i want one keyframe sort of to make these sort of uh, like a blinking disappearing type of thing right like that, so they disappear like that. And then you can actually just copy these, go to the merge node, go to settings, and then paste the settings for this one as well. And we're gonna have to do these for all the cards that come, except that the one that, except the one that we selected, right? Which in this case, I think is the fifth card. Like that. And if you don't want them to all disappear at the same time, just go and select all of the merge nodes, go to the keyframe section, and then show only selected, I think. We're gonna have to 
fit to screen. Zoom out a little bit. And we're gonna have to open these. Make this a little bit bigger. And then we just move all of these, let's say a few frames, like two frames. And then they all disappeared. Now, after that, we I added this glow effect. And make sure to apply mode is it to merge under, but this is just a creative, um, what do you call this creative decision that I just did myself. Right. And then the last thing that I wanted to show you was that here we can see that the tracker loses its tracking point. Right. So the way to fix this, or is that first of all, you don't have to get rid of these keyframes yet. First of all, we're going to find where it goes crazy right here on this keyframe, and then make sure that you select these. And the tracking has to be, or these points right here have to be red, the line of the tracker, otherwise it's not gonna affect it. And then once they are red, you have to just go this keyframe and then match it to the place that you're tracking. Like here, then this one, we're gonna have to move these, not that one, but you can use these controls right here as well to match this correctly. Then one more time. And then after this disappears, you can actually just try to match this to make it look a little bit natural in this case. And then it will go back to the center because it's not on screen anymore, but you can still have an idea of how this ends up looking or where it would be, right? Maybe a little bit less like this and do these a couple of times. That's the only way to basically work around these when the tracker is not on screen anymore. And if you want the object to sort of follow whatever you tracked off screen. Okay. After we have these completely off screen, we can go to the keyframe section and then we're going to delete all the other keyframes that we're not going to use. Otherwise our element is going to come back into the screen again and then take, let's take a look. Now we can skip this part because I stop animating that always. Otherwise it will be too long, right? Then we have the outro or the ending section. And then our element will show or go out with the hand that we have right here. So that's basically how you created these or how you can create these with the 3D tool. And basically this just saves you the time of having to create this whole composition and having to play around with all the different macros in different places. Now, the last thing that you can also do is if you go to the 3D tool right here, you can activate motion blur so that it has a little bit of motion blur when the spinning happens. And then you have to also activate motion blur on your tracker. So when the element is moving uh, here outside, we have this sort of blurriness as well. Otherwise it will just look like this and it's not really natural because you want to sort of match the blurriness of the actual movement of your element as well. Okay, so yeah, that is basically it. If you don't have this 3D carousel tool, well, you won't have it yet because this is not out or this tool in the way that it's built, it's not out yet. But there is a free Fusion composition that you can download from the Swality website where you can download these that is already sort of set up like this. Now, oh, I think I should update these actually. I'm gonna have to update these to add the time stretcher so that it's the rendering is a little bit faster. And I think that should be good. Now, this one only has five cards, but as you know, you can always just add more cards depending on what you need. And if you want to use a video, just replace the loader that you have right here. That's it for now. So yeah, that is it for now. And I have another idea that I want to showcase because somebody sent me an Instagram post showing the effect of like the person talking and then these screens sort of like um, some of them showing behind the person talking and then some of them can go in in front and that's not a complicated process, but I'll show you that on a future video because it's not that complicated. Although it is a lot easier if you have the studio version, because otherwise you're going to have to mask your subject or the person speaking. And if you don't have studio, that's going to take you a long, long time.
So yeah, that is it for this video. I hope that you learn a little bit something new and make sure to download the free 3D carousel to play around with it and try things out.